Thanks, guys. Yeah, so I built a, uh, an EC2 installation um, at work that I want to show off. One, just to talk about what I've learned, and, and, and two, to ask questions. I'm just definitely not the best this in the room. I, I know that for sure. Um, so I, I wanted uh, I, I, I put together some really underwhelming visuals here. I think you can see just just a screen shot just to give you something to talk at here real quick. But if, if you've never seen it, this is uh, what you see when you log into EC2. And um, this, this is just the EC2 dashboard. And this is actually just a really small installation that I'm moving my own site onto right now. This is an appropriate thing. But I just want to let you see what EC2 even looked like if you've, if you've never seen it before. But some background on the problem. Um, again, I work at an affiliate marketing firm. <coughs> In the affiliate marketing wor world, uh, I've learned nothing is done right, pretty much. Uh, I like at all. So we have this really, really terrible site that's just coded as it's like if it's like they tried to do it the most wrong way possible, um, and it gets all it gets at times a lot of traffic. Like between uh, like around lunchtime, it'll serve like a quarter million page views an hour, and at other times, you know, <coughs> maybe it's a hundred or a couple thousand or something. Wow, quarter so, million an hour? Yeah, it, it like it, it gets it really ramps up, you know, and then, and then again it goes like dead. Yeah. So instead of uh, is that lunch time in a particular time zone or uh, I don't really what? no I guess I guess it's my time zone approximately um, that'd be interesting to see actually if like people hit it after lunch hours I don't know yeah. I always it's, it's around my lunch time looking for lunch deals <clears throat> yeah 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 the site is a couponing site is what it is so again very boring uh, maybe other kind of project but <laughs> that's what happened so anyway you know. To, to deal with these inefficiencies um, and handle that spike in load, like you know, option one of course is just put the thing on a huge, huge box and let it run. And that's it. Uh, option two was to try to get a little cute and you know, scale servers out as needed, and then you know, turn them off as not needed. And that's what I went with. Um, in hindsight, it may or may not have been a good call. I, I don't know, but that's that's what I'm I'm doing here. Um, I set up on EC2 an architecture such that there's a server and you know these are these are just screenshots terminals again just to have some kind of visually at all those kind of abstracting. We have the server I call master, which is a very small instance, does not serve any web pages itself, and pretty much just hosts our uh, version control and is the hub for synchronization across all the other web servers. Then we have web servers that I just named WW1 through WWW3, uh, which scale on and off uh, currently manually, but I'll, I'll make that in the future uh, as you know, we get spikes and load or whatever. So I wanted to talk about how I got this all set up because it was actually kind of tricky. Um, oh, and lastly, I should also mention that there's another server uh, using Microsoft, uh, not Microsoft, Amazon RDS, relational database server. It's pretty much just a dedicated database installation that is <laughs> easy easy too, I think. It's MySQL? Uh, yeah, it's MySQL. Yeah. So anyway, here's the solution I came up with. And again, I'm open to better, um, better solutions that are ready to be found here. What I'm doing is on master, we have all of our Project source code is stored in this source folder, right when you log in, and it's all source via Git. If you're an LS source, you see each domain broken out on a per domain basis. That's how that's how you know, pretty straightforward. And we've got a mirroring architecture on the web servers. The web, the web servers are functionally identical. It's called someone's mirror. Think of that. Um, the, the web servers are all functionally identical. They're, they're mirrors of each other at any point in time. But the way I got this working, and actually, sorry, I need to backtrack one step to this is WordPress, uh, for better or worse. We're really using WordPress in this case. So WordPress is a little bit weird, especially when you're dealing with multiple web servers, because unlike in a typical code deployment situation, you, you have a pretty typical path of here's our source, time to deploy it, sync some files, and we're done. In WordPress, it's pretty really weird though, because you know, let's say you know, I'm the programmer, but someone else is just writing blog posts, and they log in and write a blog article, and there's an image, and they post it. Well, under this configuration, 
when they log in, they're going to be routed by the load balancer arbitrarily to one of the three web servers that have to be, have to be running. And when yeah, they, look. yeah, and when they upload that folder or that file, it's going to save to whichever web server they happen to be authenticated against. Yeah. So now all the servers are out of sync. So that's that's another problem to solve in this scenario. Uh -huh. So so here's how I tackled all of this. Um, the, the workflow shook out such that you know on our local laptops with help machines or whatever we make our changes and push them via Git into the source folder on master, which again is you know, version control under Git. And then <coughs> deployment, um, I think I have another, yeah, I have another picture here. Okay, there we go. I wrote a rake, uh, for, for each site, I wrote a rake task, and if you're wondering, I, I made a program all this, is, I swear this isn't a bunch of clipboard here that's going on or whatever here, this is, this is done right. But, but for each for each site, I, I had a great task that would uh, stage the changes to code and then deploy the changes to code. And what stage means is it would take the changes that were in source and then rsync them over to www, not get pull them from www to source, but actually rsync, and we'll talk about that in a second. That's what staging would do. Deploying would actually push everything out to the other web servers. Um, so, so let wait me, a minute. You said yeah. it went from oh, <laughs> you said it went from source to www. Yeah, that's not the web servers. Correct. It's just a directory there. It's okay. just another folder. This is where the complexity. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is where the complexity kicks in. The best way I found to keep everything in sync um, is via a utility called LSYNC-D. I don't think it was ever used before, but it's basically rsync connected to iNotify, such that when iNotify detects a file system change, it fires an rsync pulse. Okay. So what's happening is when I rsync source to www. Uh, LSYNC-D detects a change and goes, hey, wait a minute, something changed. And it rsyncs against all of the servers, right? All of the web servers, so www1 through 3. Now I have on the other side of things, and then to solve this problem whereby, you know, a blog poster might put a file on a web server, <coughs> all the www servers also have LSYNC-D running. And when they detect a file change, they push it back to the www folder on master. So what happens is, and that again triggers master to pulse out. So if, if any file changes on any server, there's like a there's like a one-way pulse from, from master outward, and then a pulse coming from all the web servers back inward. So in two steps, you get everything synced, no matter how many web servers are running at the time. So I was pretty happy with that. Some. Um, just interesting details I found, by the way. At first I was using Git to sync source and www1 master, but I found that was actually like too clever, where you know Git was giving me like merge conflicts and crap, and I, I really didn't care. Because one, one of the points of keeping source and www separate is I really don't <coughs> want all of these like blog pictures and crap in version control anyway. It's, I just don't need it there to upload things. So a change I made recently was, again, not to use Git to sync source and WWW, but to use rsync because it's dumber. And that actually works pretty well. Um, we're about out of time. But that's, that's the thing at 50,000 feet. Are there any questions and or suggestions? <coughs> so, better. Wait, so what happens if a, if a user makes a post? Does it ever accidentally get overwritten? Uh, post in the database. Yeah, yeah, the posts all, are, are all in the database, and that, that's, that's fine. Because you know, there's only one database that all the web servers are going to. Uh, we, we have had issues, and these are kind of mystery issues, frankly, whereby sometimes some images disappear. And I think that's just like when I, I'm, I'm finding that there's a lot of nuance in the rsync options to get it to sync exactly the way you want yeah. it to sync. So I think every now and then, <coughs> again, very rarely, we'll have an image disappear or something. But for the most part, it seems to like work. How much effort would be involved in changing your image storing to Amazon S3? I looked a lot at S3 at first, and there were a few things that scared me away, but again, I don't know if that was a good call or a bad call. What, what scared me away was it 
S3 claims to be eventually consistent, which pretty much means that there's going to be an arbitrary and unpredictable amount of lag in, in synchronizing the S3 servers themselves across the country. So I think S3 would have been a good move in that it makes this synchronization problem Amazon's problem instead of mine, and they probably solve it better. Um, but at the same time, when I heard eventually consistent, it kind of scared me off and I wanted more control over the process. Again, that may or may not have been the right call. Well, but it'd be worthwhile to, to measure the <coughs> what eventually means operationally. Or at least push it yeah. to one server of your own. Yeah. So, yeah, when I do, do this on my own server, because I moved my own site off of a budget host now, I'll, I'll have more freedom to play with this, you know, mm -hmm. lower consequences. So how much does the cheap uh, EC3 instance cost? <coughs> um, 15, 20 bucks a month? Yeah, yeah, the, the micro class instances, I think it's like 15 bucks a month. And there's kind of a sizable gap between that and the small. Small is like 60 bucks a month. Yeah. Is, is an eventual consistency what you have here, though? I mean, what, what well, it's eventual within about 10 or 15 seconds, which is okay. Uh, like, it's not great, admittedly, but it's okay. Are these, are um, these all EC2 instances? Uh, yeah. And what what size instances are they? The, the, the master server is a small, and the web servers so vary see. from X large, uh, I think, down to large. And, and your, what's the... Uh, it's like Apache running with uh, Apache, yes, yeah. lamp stack. Yeah. I, I read, I, I haven't tried this myself, but I read an article uh -huh. about someone who's trying to solve a similar problem. Okay. You know, they, they had some sort of WordPress or some prepackaged application that was PHP or something and just couldn't render pages fast enough for yeah. them. Yeah. And what they did is they took, they put Nginx in front of it. Yeah. And they said, okay, I, I'm only, I'm going to cache an Nginx for like one second. Uh -huh. So Nginx um, only ever sends one request a second back to the um, the actual um, application, yeah. and um, and then if uh, for certain users, like if somebody actually makes a post, mm -hmm. um, it invalidates the cache for that user, and they go directly through and yeah. come back. That's which that incidentally populates the cache. Sure. Right. That, that, that would be clever. Currently, we're doing caching at the PHP level via W3 total cache. Doing it at Nginx probably would be faster. We just didn't have a time, but I like the idea. Yeah, and that, that way they only get one server instead of multiples. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't, I, I think Amazon has some sort of caching stuff now. They have like Elastic Metcache or something. Uh, so I've heard, yeah, some, some Metcache. I've never worked with it before, so I don't really know much about it. I mean, the mutations are. I mean, that's like very rare, right? Like only the maintainer, the content. Right. The only people like actually changing content. That's like a yeah, rare yeah, thing. It, it, right? It's very much a, so, a read-oriented. Okay. Yeah. So okay. It seems like like creating a bunch of like dynamically creating cache caching or something. That would be I mean, Wikipedia. <coughs> they do a lot of that kind of stuff. I think so. Yeah, and, and again, the caching we're using, like, it's probably not as efficient as it could be, given that it has to at least fire PHP to start working. But the cache is pretty fast. Um, cool. It just it's just not the fastest it could be, I'm sure. You know, if we did it at, in Nginx or somewhere earlier on the chain. Are, are the only updates from the members of, from the people that work at your company? Uh, for the most part. Um, to, we, can, we can even round off and say yes. Yeah. Because if you did that, have you considered having a micro instance like a WWW secret, and they they know to log into the special place and do an update there, and then we that way you just have one way syncs. Yeah. What I was thinking about doing was actually just rerouting the networking such that you go to admin dot whatever <coughs> yeah. and it logs into master and then you push out. That that could work. Um, and I am still strongly considering making that change. Because it'd, be, it'd be easy to implement, and I think it would solve some of the it, I, I would think one of the reasons you might be missing images is if you get a, a sync from, if somebody generates a post to www1, mm -hmm. and at that exact same second, there's a sync coming from master, and it says, oh, that file doesn't exist, therefore our sync gets rid of it for you. Yeah, that sounds I mean, you could probably fix that with some flag, but the, you get a lot of race conditions if you're doing yeah. two-way sinks from multiple locations. And again, the only thing working in my favor in terms of race conditions is that 
like like my company is very small, so at any given time, there's, it's unlikely that there'll be two people making a change. But uh, but when it when and if, yeah, we have reservations. <coughs> so I, I I do like the idea of, of giving admin users a, a direct connection to master and pushing out. What's your overhead on uh, dropping a new web server into your line? Uh, in terms of Spinning it up, it only takes a few seconds, which is great. And then we only leave it up for as long as we need it. So, um, I mean, I don't know how they they charge. Is that um, by the minute? And any time yeah. you use it, okay, by the minute. Yeah, <coughs> they, they, they bill in instance hours. This is the unit measure rounded. Uh, so should I think partial hours or rounded full hours. Is that what it is? I yeah. think so, but but it's like. Everybody so when you decide you need, um, a, you say you have five, you, get, you need a sixth. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if that's all configuration managed so that you say, come up with another one and it pulls down from Puppet or CF Engine or something like that. And <coughs> that I also have done via rate. Um, but, but yeah, that's that's pretty easy to do. And say they're asking how many times actually we've gotten huge spikes. We're just like, oh crap, we need two more servers now. And it works. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Yeah.